everyone, this is update for October 5, 2022, day 224 of the war, end of the date update. <clears throat> There's actually surprisingly very little was happening on the front lines. Uh, essentially, I would say pretty much nothing was happening. Uh, we'll discuss each of the active uh, section of the front, specifically North Luhansk and Kherson's, Kherson Bridgehead once we get there. Uh, as a general sort of um, military news, uh, Russian side they reported that they um, uh, drafted 200,000 uh, conscripts or res reservists, whatever you're going to call it. Uh, so that's just kind of like, just going to give us kind of impression of the progress. And it's obviously um, pretty slow, I would say. Um, so now let's actually move to the front line. Uh, the situation along the state border is more or less uh, quiet. There is some action, but it's not, um, it's pretty subdued, let's put it this way. Let's now actually jump to North Luhansk section of the front line. Let's see what's happening there. <clears throat> this was what's happening on the uh, October uh, 3, as you remember, uh, Russian troops were command decided to withdraw, uh, essentially trying to build the defensive line along this uh, road that leads from Kupiansk uh, to Kremina. Uh, and this, uh, um, however, this was hap the, the next, the things that were happening, as you can see, uh, Ukrainian forces, specifically commander units, reconnaissance units, managed to cross uh, this road in few places and essentially prevented Russian troops from building a, a continuous front line. And that's also what happened is the Russian forces don't simply don't have enough troops, don't have enough infantry, and that's just the root cause of all of the other failures that Russian uh, forces experiencing right now systemically in Ukraine. Uh, one thing is just update that the uh, Russian command decided to uh, transfer uh, 61st Naval Infantry Brigade here to this, to this uh, call it Svatova Front or uh, North Luhansk Front Line. And um, obviously, this really means that this is like, actually super important. They're trying to hold this front line. They want to prevent uh, Svatova from falling and by basically the most important uh, what they want to prevent Ukrainian troops from advancing here towards east and essentially down the road later uh, towards south and creating really huge problems for the Russian command while they expecting those re uh, uh, reserve units. Uh, just for a reminder, um, Russian, the way, you know, uh, the way Russian sort of uh, military system works is that uh, airborne units and naval infantry uh, units tend to attract uh, the most driven people with the uh, best fighting spirit. So in general, those units tend to be better quality in terms of um, uh, fighting spirit, right? The problem with those units is that they are really light on the heavy uh, equipment. Um, so that's there, then sort of they are negative. So <clears throat> nevertheless, at this point, the most important is the fighting spirit. And they do have that. So uh, this basically what this kind of means at this point is that Ukrainian uh, troops or Ukrainian command is not moving fast enough. And uh, Russian command slowly being able to... Um, not quite to build the front line, but definitely plug the most gapping holes. As you can see, the, this unit was essentially put here to kind of build the link between Svatova and Kremina, essentially, to prevent uh, further advances of Ukrainian troops here. So this definitely going to make it, this unit here is definitely going to make it much harder for Ukrainian troops um, to advance uh, further. Um, beyond that, there is no really uh, meaningful updates. Ukrainian uh, forces moving very slow. Again, this is what I mentioned before. This is uh, talking about the problems and lack of knowledge and experiences how to exploit weakness, right? Or initial, um, or say, how to exploit initial success and actually leverage it 
and magnify to to achieve even much larger success. And this is you can see it's not being done by Ukrainian troops here, and you will see the same picture actually in uh, Kherson bridgehead. So otherwise, things here. Um, so uh, for the fifth, we were pretty quiet. Uh, Russian uh, side reports that Ukrainian command is regrouping, concentrating on whatever, uh, which is again is uh, is a mistake right now in this situation. Uh, nevertheless, that's uh, that's what Ukrainian command is doing. Uh, now let's move uh, south. Let's see what's going on on the north North Donbass section of the front line. Since here, I'm pretty much without change essentially uh, Wagner mercenary so uh, they continue attacking in Bakhmut, Soledar, the Svimka, uh, Spirnem this is almost like I want to be I don't want to be broken record but that's essentially what's going on here so as you can see 61st Naval Infantry Brigade was pulled out of here so again this weakens even more this uh, attacking um, um, attacking forces so essentially it's driven only by Wagner mercenaries at the same time Wagner mercenaries are um, also another pretty capable unit that has strong fighting spirits and in terms of the size it's probably at this point definitely division size could be even larger right so this is not some you know battalion that's not even brigade it's not regiment it's it's pretty big in this is pretty big unit in size uh the rest of the russian this you know um uh 90th uh, tank division this 57th brigade 15th 35th we don't even have confirmation that they're still around here uh and if they are there they basically shadows on themselves so this is just basically consolidated units that are essentially not capable of much if even if if they are still there there's good chance that they've been pulled for refitting at this point uh, there are some reports that uh, Wagner mercenaries made some advances uh, here in uh, Bakhmut at the same time we don't have uh, a details b uh, another some kind of independent confirmation so for now we just want to say okay there is that information uh, once we have sort of confirmation uh, I'll, I'll update accordingly uh, now let's uh, let's this is the southern sort of sector of uh, this northern bus front line again similar and you know attacks in similar areas uh, that sort of never stopped stopped by wagner mercenaries uh without so far in the southern uh, sector much success um, now let's move to central donbass section of the front line things here uh, surprisingly quiet because usually there are russian attacks pretty much every day out of this piske salient uh, there are some reports also that they made progress uh, in the like village that's next to Piski, which is Pervomaiske, and they, you know, advanced there. I don't know, hundred meters or something like that. But honestly, this is not meaningful uh, for the big picture right now. There are some attacks in Novomikhailivka, also towards Vladar, but none of this, um, you know, anything major. Uh, now let's quickly glance at uh, the Parisian front line. This is, uh, as always, quiet. Nothing major is going on right now here. Uh, now let's move to actually Kherson bridgehead and let's see what's happening there. So as you can see, Ukrainian troops has the same picture. Is it's the same problem? Let's put it this way. Uh, they slowly advancing um, behind. Uh, Russian troops that already advanced much further, moved much further, and they bought time for themselves to start building defensive position. May not be enough time, but at least they're trying to sort of dig in and create something. And um, while Ukrainian troops kind of like slowly moving through all of these villages, uh, what they call clearing them up, and which is honestly essentially useless activity but uh, the point is that the move is extremely slow which uh, gives time for the Russian side to basically rebuild defenses and as we discussed the point of this retreat was to shorten the front line uh, 
create the ability to actually create contiguous front line because that was a big problem for the Russian side. There was basically a front line that's built around strongholds and Ukrainian like commander units and reconnaissance units, uh, they could easily penetrate between those uh, strongholds. They were simply too far away from each other and basically attack Russian uh, strongholds from the rear or attack even uh, supply columns and all of that. So uh, this is attempt to create contiguous front line. This is, as we discussed, is not going to save Russian troops here. It's just going to be, um, as as mentioned before many times, it's going to be um, guaranteed slow death by thousand cuts. And there is high potential right now that it will turn into disorderly retreat that will lead to actually catastrophic results. Uh, it was on the verge of that on the force. Uh, Russian side managed to sort of gain command, managed to gain control of the situation. It somewhat stabilized to uh, to great degree thanks to uh, Ukrainian side that was slow and allowed that to happen. Uh, also, I mentioned that there were some unconfirmed reports that Russian troops decided to evacuate Snigorivka. Uh, it didn't look like that that happened. So apparently there was a change in the plan in Russian command. They decided to uh, stand the ground and defend this, um, this bridgehead for as long as possible. Uh, so how long this is going to be possible is obviously... It's impossible to predict because we don't have uh, reports from uh, Russian general staff, even though it's openly discussed in Russia that a lot of those reports are basically lies. And that's part of the problem. There is actually some recognition inside of the Russian society where they literally say we need to stop lying to, to ourselves and stop making up these reports that that to completely bogus, complete lie, that... You know, because then decisions are being made based on those lies, and obviously those decisions lead to catastrophic results because they based on lies. So there is some recognition. Uh, it, the problem is that this this sort of lying culture is deeply embedded in the Russian society and in general in the Soviet society. So changing that is going to be um, almost uh, re redoing dna so basically the 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 situation needs to be truly catastrophic to change that and it's not there yet it's definitely not catastrophic it's painful for the russian side but it's clearly not catastrophic there's still no um that kind of feeling this is kind of like sink or swim moment so this is still kind of like okay we just lost a little bit but that's okay we'll we'll sort of we'll, we'll regain it later kind of approach so uh again uh ukrainian command is continuing attacks uh, against the russian logistics across the dnipro river uh, and that guarantees eventual um um sort of situation in favor of Ukrainian troops and that Ukrainian troops will liberate this bridgehead uh, sooner or later. Uh, there are reports that uh, Russian command is building sort of smaller defensive positions or tiny bridgehead, uh, bridgeheads to uh, around this <clears throat> dam near Nova Kachovka and the other one around Kherson and Antonievsky bridge essentially this area uh, which uh, what this really means is those and um, those are not truly um, like long term. It doesn't mean that the Russian command is trying to sort of hold this uh, those two tiny bridgeheads for long term because that's going to be nearly impossible. Uh, what this really means is that will help to orderly uh, withdraw troops on the other side of Dnipro River, basically. Uh, because uh, rear guard units will prevent Ukrainian troops from basically overrunning sort of Russian troops that will be exiting. That's sort of plan. How it's going get, to get carried out, uh, nobody knows. We'll, we'll, we'll find out probably in the near future. So situation here, basically, Ukraine, what we can kind of like, you know, as a 
uh, like generic terms say, okay, Ukrainian command is regrouping, resinking, preparing um, the troops for continuing pressure uh, and uh, in more sort of blatant ways, like Ukrainian command is kind of behind the curve, doesn't understand the importance of pushing and not let, let, not uh, relieving the pressure and continuing pressure, and, and that's, uh, that's where the problem is. Uh, nevertheless, even with all of this sort of failures, uh, this is the, the success here is virtually guaranteed. It's just a question how soon it's going to happen and how bad the outcome is going to be for the Russian side. That's the only two big questions, essentially. Um, that's it for the day. Uh, that's a short update because there's literally not much is going on. Um, I'll try to provide a little bit more macroeconomic news uh, down the road for this situation, for this kind of like slow days to just kind of give you more thought for what's going on. Uh, but today I just didn't have enough time. Uh, thanks again and uh, till tomorrow. Bye bye.